I'd like to call the Gurney Village Board regular meeting of November 18th, 2019 to order. Roll call, please, Andy. Garner. Here. O'Brien. Present. Balmas. Present. Hood. Here. Thorstenson. Here. Ross. Here. Six present. All right. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If that's not a proud moment, looking at our fire department here, um, I don't know what is. Makes my heart swell. Um, welcome, everyone, and go Warren Blue Devils. If you haven't heard, it's our first time to the state semifinals. The game will be on Saturday, and we wish them the best of luck. Yes. <laughs> Uh, first item of business is approval of the consent agenda as presented. Do I have a motion to Second. approve? Motion from Trustee Balmas. Second from Trustee Thorstenson. Roll call, please, Andy. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Aye. Six aye. Motion carries. Patrick, please read the consent agenda into the record. Item number one, approval of the minutes from the November 4, 2019 Village Board meeting. At number two, approval of bid award for the fuel purchase to the low bidder Avalon Petroleum Company at a supplier discount of minus 0 0.0384 cents per gallon for unleaded gasoline and a supplier markup price of 0 0.0120 cents per gallon for biodiesel fuel. At number three, approval of payroll for period ending November 8, 2019 in the amount of $1,054,720.03. At number four, approval of bills for period ending November 18, 2019, in the amount of $1,559,610.14. Thank you, Patrick. Do I have a motion to approve the so consent moved. agenda? Second. Motion by Trustee Garner, second by Trustee Ross. Roll call, please. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Aye. Six aye. Motion carries. It is my honor tonight to administer the oath of office for the promotion of firefighter paramedic Michael Swantek to fire lieutenant. Chief Cavanaugh, will you join me up front? Do I have the okay? Well, you know this is a good decision when the whole department shows up for you. Um, and I know it is too. Uh, on, on a personal note, Mike, on the worst, one of the worst nights of my life, and I, I forget why I had, I had an invite from the fire department to be there that evening, but I was downsized at work, which was, I, I, you know, I mean, some of you have been through it and know. And Mike, that night, made me know it was, just let me know it was going to be all right. You were so sweet that night. I will never, I remember that to this day. That was a long time ago. But thank you. So I was, I'm just delighted to be able to administer this oath. Okay. All right. You ready? You can't change your mind after this. <laughs> all right. Raise your right hand. I, Michael Swantek. I, Michael Swantek. Having been appointed to the office of fire lieutenant. Having been appointed to the office of fire lieutenant. In the village of Gurney. In the village of Gurney. In the county of Lake aforesaid. In the county of Lake aforesaid. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. The Constitution of the State of Illinois. And that I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of fire lieutenant, the duties of the office of fire lieutenant, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Bring your family up. All right, would you like to? 
God moment. So uh, what does it exactly take for Mike to be here tonight? Um, to be a civil service uh, sworn lieutenant is years of studying books, years of practicing tests, all those things that are formal. However, what it really takes to become a lieutenant in the Gurney Fire Department is to be a leader by example. Um, that's one of the things that stands out to me immediately when I think of Mike. Mike is always a guy, you know he's there, you can count on him, he's out in front, he'll take on the duties that a lot of people will not take on, he'll lead, others follow behind him, he falls there. We had the opportunity, the battalion chiefs myself, to sit down and interview Mike before he took this position. We offered the spot. First thing he said to us was he felt this position was to lead others and teach. He really wanted to educate and get the next individuals ready to be the next lieutenants. That's how he saw this position. It was, it was so neat to hear. He didn't talk about himself at all. He always talked about what he could do more for the department, what he could do for the guys on shift. When we talked to him about what shift he was going to, he immediately was out there thinking of ways to improve it. Things, he's excited the future of the fire department. And it was just, it was great to hear. I know the three shift commanders that were in the room were very happy to hear his responses. Uh, we've known Mike for, You've been here since 2002, all along. Mike leads the department in many ways. He does lots of work behind the scenes for us. We really appreciate it. I'm excited that we're able to do this tonight. So Mike's going to get his badge pinned on by his wife, Sherry, here. That's uh, my lovely wife, Sherry, my son, Kyle, and Alex. Um, Ella not pictured his way at school, so she's not here tonight. My younger brother, Greg, my mom, Margaret, my stepdad, Bob. Uh, thanks for coming out. Appreciate it. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank my family. Uh, they put up with us uh, with our shift work, shift life. We miss a lot of things, um, events, Christmas, um, all kinds of things. And uh, we make do over and over again. And, um, come home crabby a lot from busy nights, and they understand that and work with me through that stuff. So appreciate that. And then uh, all the guys here, um, I don't know, I learn from all of you every single day, and I just hope I can give back what you guys have given me over the years. So thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. That's it. Nicely done. Okay. Now, um, there's no other petitions and communications. We're going to move on to reports. The first is from our finance director, Brian Gosnell, on our bittersweet golf course capital improvement plan proposal. 
So sure. So I'll give you a quick intro. As you know, uh, we own Bittersweet Golf Course. We have Golf Visions, a management company that runs the day-to-day -day operations out there. Um, they've been able to uh, cover operating expenses with revenue from the golf course. Also been able to cover some capital expenditures out there. Um, but it's our property. It's our asset. We need to be the one investing in the course. So we met with them recently, uh, myself, uh, Chief Kavanaugh, and Brian uh, talked about some of the needs out there, uh, kind of what they're thinking. Um, took that information, brought it back here to Village Hall, and looked to see if we could come up with a dedicated revenue source to uh, make some investments in the golf course out there. So we've done that. Brian's got a quick PowerPoint tonight that he's going to run through kind of staff's thoughts and proposal. Um, get your feedback on it. If it's uh, something the board's agreeable to, then we'll bring it back at a future board meeting to formalize it and make some adjustments in the budget. Um, but kind of wanted, wanted to run our thoughts by you first here. All right. Thank you, Pat. So before we get into the plan of, of how to fund it, I just wanted to go through um, a couple slides here, a little history of how we got uh, kind of where we're at. Uh, Golf Visions took over operations, management operations of the course in 2012. Uh, village renewed that contract in 2017. Um, initially, in fiscal year 13, the village put in 100,000 uh, kind of working cash flow. Um, and that was paid back to the village in fiscal years 15 and 16. So um, as of now, we don't have any operating support from a, from a cash standpoint in the, in the course. Golf Visions has done an, um, an incredible job. Um, Golf Visions is paid through a contractual agreement uh, that's historically been covered by course revenues throughout the year. Um, so it's nothing that the village pays directly. It's been covered through um, any over revenues over expenditures from uh, course operations. Um, they've been able to, to generate enough revenue to do some capital improvements, as, uh, as Pat said. Um, those include um, equipment lease. They're in their second equipment lease now. Uh, first year, their second um, second lease. Um, other capital, chipping and putting area was, was put in. Uh, they were able to pay for that out of course operations. Uh, the deck on the back of the clubhouse, uh, repainting the clubhouse, some signage out front, and then tree trimming and fencing up to this point um, has, has been paid for out of um, operations, essentially. Uh, course average is roughly about 1.1 million in revenues. Uh, last few seasons, we've seen the impact from the weather, obviously, the two flooding events. Um, overall, rounds are down uh, about 10% from 2015, uh, again, largely due to weather over uh, 2017, 2019. Um, Gulf Visions has been able to adjust operating expenses to offset declines, um, so they've been able to at attack that from, a, from an expenditure standpoint and reduce expenditures. Uh, the course does have a tax contribution, uh, about Primarily amusement tax between 40 and 45,000 a year, uh, smaller sales tax and food and beverage implications. But since 2013, uh, the course has contributed over 250,000 in taxes to the village. So it is a, a revenue generator, not only a nice community asset, but uh, economic one as well. Uh, when we met with Golf Visions, uh, some capital needs that came to the forefront uh, were asphalt paths. Um, currently, I believe they're crushed stone paths. Um, that makes makes the course unplayable if there's heavy rain and things like that. Um, so that would actually add, um, under their estimation, about five or six hundred rounds a year. So there's a payback between five and seven years on that, um, based on increased uh, increased rounds. Um, some retaining wall work, uh, roof roof replacement on the clubhouse, uh, tree care, which we broke down into two categories, uh, kind of the tier one items, which you know could potentially be a safety hazard, and then the tier two, which is more aesthetic kind of tree, tree uh, removal or tree rehab. Um, pond improvements, um, updating some equipment, adding some equipment, and, uh, and then updating the irrigation system. Those are the ones that, that came to the forefront. We, we took that list, uh, broke it down into what is an immediate need versus, versus kind of a want or, or maybe a longer term goal, um, and then looked at what we could do in the next couple years and hopefully came up with a plan to be able to accomplish the immediate needs. So to do that, um, staff's proposing uh, one-time capital funding from, from a couple different sources here, actually three different sources. Um, first would be a transfer from the current capital fund uh, to the golf course fund of about 250000 uh, This would cover cart paths, retaining walls, roof replacement, which we thought were the biggest immediate needs in the next couple years. Um, 
just an item of note that 250,000 is just a little bit less than what the what the course contributed in taxes uh, since 2013. So there's a kind of a nice connection there between <coughs> what they were able to generate in taxes and and the capital needs. Um, currently, uh, the general fund has about 70, 75, 76,000 in a fee in lieu of tree account um, that we can use to do some of the tree care out there. Um, that would be something we would propose to do uh, early spring um, through a budget amendment. We would have to amend the current budget, the fiscal year 20 budget, um, to appropriate that expenditure in the golf course fund as well as the transfer from the general fund. Also, we have earmarked in the um, impact fee fund that we can use to for stormwater management, and that would help us uh, knock out the pond maintenance items. So about 9000 there, we could do that through a through a transfer this year as well, try to do that in fiscal year 20. And then um, the one-time funding, you know, obviously would address th those most immediate needs. Everything else we would do through uh, next year's budget approval process. So we could knock out the cart past the retaining walls and the roof replacement uh, with that. Looking at how we can s set ourselves up for having a funding source for this kind of capital items moving forward, um, we looked at <clears throat> proposing using the amusement tax generated by the course annually, which is about forty to 45000 uh, We could deposit that back in the golf course fund. Um, the village would budget annually any capital items that would be paid for with, that, with those funds. Um, we would also ask Golf Visions to budget 10000 up in the first couple of years until those, that equipment lease runs out, and then up that to 30000 ask them to budget that every year for capital items in their operating budget. So they would, have, they would also have um, some, some money towards capital every year that they would be uh, responsible for. Um, it's important to note um, right now we don't have any capital needs flowing through the golf course fund. Um, the proposal here is to utilize the golf course fund for that. What that does is put it under the village's authority to review the projects every year, uh, budget for those projects every year, and then handle those contracts. So. Um, that's kind of the proposal for future capital and the one-time one -time items. Um, as I said, we could do some of this through a budget amendment for the fiscal year 20. Here we can bring that forward, and the rest of it we can budget with the fiscal year 21 capital improvement program. This is an excellent plan, much better than I thought it was going to be. Um, but, you know, since we acquired the golf course, we've kind of just treated it as long as it broke even. We were all right, but it really is an asset that the village owns. It's a beautiful, gorgeous piece of property. Um, so, along with all of our assets, we have to, you know, think about investing money for upkeep. So, staff sat down, put a great plan together, um, and figured out how to pay for it. So that makes it even better. Um, questions from the trustees or things they've observed out there or would like to see? Trustee O'Brien. Uh, just it would be nice if it was also open to more of the public, uh, not people who just are not just golfers. So uh, maybe from Gogarney through the park district or maybe a walking program in the off season. So that gives the public an opportunity to experience the clubhouse and the course through those paved cor uh, paths. I agree. And, and golf visions in our discussions actually brought that up as one of the benefit of the asphalt paths was being able to use it more for public events. Other questions from trustees? No, it's a beautiful amenity that the village should really invest in, so I'm all for it. All right, it was Trustee Baumas, Trustee Thorstenson. Yeah, echoing that, I know that they had the fish fry on Fridays, and I think that they needed to get away from the fish fry because of the expense to put it on. But I think it's one of those kind of if you build it, they'll come things along with that. You know, when they had some musical, some entertainment there this summer was really nice, since I'm not a golfer. So I was able to particip participate in some of that. So I agree with Trustee O'Brien that if we, if we could do a little bit more. I also just wanted to say that that seems like, uh, um, you know, appreciate all your work here. I like the two things. One, the amusement tax that we're getting makes really good sense to put it in that fund. And then I also, of course, like that you're asking Golf Visions to participate. Mm -hmm. So good job. I did have a question. Trustee Garner. Um, with these capital improvements, uh, how long do you think it would be before we, we would uh, need more improvements? 
Uh, what did they say on that card pass, Pat? Do you remember? I think it was like 15 or 20 years on that. Yeah, these are the big ones. Yeah. So, I mean, the other big item that's on here was the, re the retaining, walls. retaining walls. So that was replacing um, stacked pavers with actually driving seawall, but that's not an immediate need at this point. So, I mean, the cart pads and the trees are the two big ones on there. After that, you've got the retaining walls, which is uh, we can do it, you know, when we decide timing <coughs> is right, funding is there. Followed by that, it'll be equipment that will just continue to roll, kind of like we do with our fleet here at the village. Um, so, like I said, these are the big ticket items that are out there right now. Sure. So this will take us out a while. And when we looked at, you know, what we've seen since, you know, 2012 when Gulf Visions <coughs> took over to now, that what we've missed in major capital, there's about 250000 The 40000 to 45000 a year in amusement tax should more than cover, does more than cover that. So, you know, we're actually increasing a little bit. So. Okay. All right. There's no other questions. Then staff. Motion to approve. Second. Uh, it's, not, it's not an action item. <coughs> this is a report to get some concurrence and agreement, and then Brian will prepare an appropriations ordinance amendment to our budget, and then staff will execute on this. So, and you'll see it in the capital plan when we get around to the March hearings. All right. Good job. Excellent job. <coughs> um, we have Committee of the Whole scheduled for next Monday, but nothing prepared or ready for it. So would the board entertain a motion to cancel the Committee of the Whole meeting next oh, Monday, the 25th? Motion from Trustee Balmas. Second. Second by Trustee Ross. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We will not have a Committee of the Whole meeting on the 25th, Jack. Okay. Um, old business, nothing? None tonight. All right, then we're gonna move on to new business. The first item is approval of ordinance 2019 77. 77 authorizing the execution of a memorandum of understanding with ring LLC relating to the use and access of the neighbors by ring application by the village of Gurney, Illinois. And Pat and Chief Smith will walk us through this. Yeah, Chief Smith's going to walk us through this. This is an opportunity for the department to be able to uh, push some information out <coughs> to those that are on the Ring Network that utilize the Neighbors by Ring app. Um, as you know, Ring has uh, different devices, doorbells, uh, security cameras, et cetera. So this would give the department kind of similar to uh, the next door where they're able to push information out and opportunity to do that over the Ring Network. So Brian's gonna kind of walk us through the proposal, what it is and what it isn't, and the benefits to the police department and the community. Thank you, Mr. Mutes, uh, Madam Mayor, Village Board. We appreciate the opportunity to be here uh, with you tonight to discuss this, uh, this program. Back in July of this year, police department staff, along with some village staff, met with Ring uh, to determine an opportunity to work with them in a transparent manner to join their uh, neighborhood program, their neighborhood app. Uh, this is a program that's uh, already enjoyed by approximately 300, 300 other police departments in the United States. Uh, locally, most recently, Lake County Sheriff's Department joined this neighborhood. And what this would allow us uh, is an opportunity to participate and share uh, crime prevention uh, information and, uh, and allow the neighbors to share information with us if they so choose. So real quickly, just kind of want to go over a few what it is and what it isn't. And so, uh, again, as I mentioned, this is an opportunity uh, for us to, to uh, share real-time crime information with the, the neighbors. Uh, think of this like a, this program like a next door, but only for uh, crime, crime related incidents. Uh, there won't be any, any other information on there. There will no advertisements uh, related to garage sales or uh, things along those lines. This is only a program for uh, crime information. So this would give us the opportunity to share information with them. And if they so choose, it would give them an opportunity to share information with us. Uh, we would not have access uh, to see anything that was posted on the site unless the individual person who's posting it has agreed to allow the police department to share that or to see that. Uh, and when we post things, uh, it would be posted under the moniker of Gurney Police Department. And again, anybody in the program could opt out to not receive information that we share. And uh, again, it would allow us an opportunity to make requests 
uh, share information about in a particular neighborhood if there was a crime pattern that was uh, beginning to creep up we could share information and ask for any videos related to uh, a particular incident those individual homeowners would then have the opportunity to share something with us or not um, again as things are posted uh, a little bit about the app there is no there are we would not see any names when we look at it um, and there are never any addresses that are shared this is a program that uh, while it's developed by ring uh, it does not require you to own any ring equipment to participate it is an app that is already active in gurney uh, anybody can join it you put in your address and it, it builds out the geo boundaries of your neighborhood and shares information with you from from your neighbors uh, again, so this is something that's already active within the village. This would give us an opportunity to share information with the residents and allow them to share information back with us. I think this is important. Uh, we've already seen a number of incidents over the summer where uh, there was a residential burglary, for instance, and videos were posted to Nextdoor. They were never shared with the police department. The police department never saw those videos. And so... This gives us an avenue to see them if they want to share them with us or for us to ask to see if there's any information out there. Uh, again, we appreciate the opportunity to present to you tonight and I am available to answer any questions that you may have. How is this different than Nixle, which we were participating in or is that just kind of gone by the wayside? Well, it, again, it, it, as far as this particular app is involved, it's only uh, crime related information. So there isn't anything else that's exchanged via that. It's free. It's free to the residents. It's free to the police department. There's no <laughs> cost associated with it. Um, so as far as how it compares to Nixle, um, I, I would have to defer to, to somebody else on the Nixle, the, the Nixle piece. Yeah, Jack, if you, our social media. <clears throat> so a big difference with Nixle. So Nixle came out similar thing they advertise to law enforcement agencies nixel is more of a notice so it'll send out basically a feed notifying people so it's a one-way feed with ring a lot of it is that it's the opportunity for the police department to reach out and get people's um, voluntarily if they submit it information on crime so it's more of a two-way avenue okay much more similar to next door just without um, the other elements <laughs> i won't be on uh, ring okay i know what you're talking about um so neighbors are reporting criminal activity, but they don't report it to the village. Does that allow the police to take action? Is that probable cause or is that as good as a police report and they're not going to report crimes to? Well, the they village? wouldn't necessarily report, make the official report through this app. This is just the sharing of information. It would allow us the opportunity to touch base with them and then go out and visit them if they so choose. Uh, but really what it is is allows us to share opportunity with our, our information with them for crime prevention uh, or if there is a crime for us to ask for their assistance can you check your camera see that if you have anything available if you do would you please share it with the police department so you're going to be able to monitor what people are posting and because they'll report it on what, what happens now on social media is they talk about a crime on Nextdoor or Facebook, but they've never called it into us. So now you have a way, some visibility into what's... So, no, this app does not allow us to monitor anything that's posted. So the only thing that we're reliant. allowed to see is that that's shared with us. All right, so we're still going to be reliant on somebody reporting a crime. Correct. Okay. Uh, other questions from the trustees? Uh, this has gotten a lot of press lately. Trustee O'Brien? I, I think it's, I'm supportive of it. I think it's handy if we can help solve crimes quicker, but I'm sure some people might question whether or not uh, GPD is able to later turn this into a surveillance of someone's property or if they have any access at all or if it's hackable or something to that effect. It sounds like it's secure, like it's only from uh, the residents to Gurney Police, but I'm, I presume some people might have a question about whether or not it can go the other way. Sure. So this is a program that's already in place. So neighbors are already sharing videos that they have uh, on this app with their other neighbors. The only thing this is allowing us to do is be able to receive that if they so choose. 
As far as the, the program itself, uh, in the memorandum or in the agreement, there is no access ever to live video. You can't even grant that permission. Um, and so we don't have any access to the program. We only have access to the information that would be shared with us. The program is still managed by Ring, um, and it's just an information sharing network when somebody chooses to share it with us. It does allow us the opportunity to ask neighbors if, if we are made aware of a crime that has, has occurred or a suspicious circumstance. It does allow us to post and ask for information, and then that information can be shared with us if they so choose, but we would never have access to their videos unless they authorized it. And it's a multi-step process. Um, there's a request that goes through, <laughs> Ring forwards it to the individuals, and then they have to authorize and actually post and then share with the police department. So as far as us having access to the videos, uh, we wouldn't have that unless uh, they and Ring allowed it. Thank you. Sure. Trustee Garner. So is there no case where a person who, has, who, who uses Ring, if they, have, if they have evidence on their cam camera, say, um, where they can be demanded to share it? So we, would, we don't know who has the cameras and, and, and don't. None of that personal information that, is, uh, that, that would be available to Ring is available to us. So we, just, we would just have access to a network. Anybody can join that program or this program, this network. You don't need a camera to be on it. Um, so anybody can join it. We don't know who those people are. We never receive any name or any information about them unless they voluntarily give that to us. And so uh, it would be no different than any other surveillance system in the community. Um, if we were made aware of something and we asked for information and that was not given to us, uh, if we could make the proper determination in a court, there could be other avenues to recover that video. But again, that's a, that's a step in furtherance that's many times past just the information sharing. So it is possible if you knew that a person had information that would help your case, they could be made to share it through the courts? Well, I, I think that's a, it's a complicated question. Um, no different than if we were aware of a video at a gas station or a video at one of our, in, in the mall. Um, we would have to be able to show that there's probable cause to believe that that video that we're looking for is actually on that system. And then we would have to go through a, a court process like we do now for search warrants, things along those lines, but that is not what the the intent of this program is. Got it. Um, Ring is just one vendor. So, so this is connected to the Ring doorbell thing, right? This is a program that was developed by <coughs> Ring free of charge for people to share information. It does not require that you own a Ring, Ring. product and you can post <coughs> video on this app from other systems. Okay, that's, you read my mind, because there's other systems on the market. ADT's now got a system, so they all, all of it, no matter what system you choose, home security system you choose for your home, you'd be able to use this app. So the app is kind of generic, even though it's got the same name as the doorbell thing. Yes, it's, okay. it's named right. after them as they're the ones that developed it. Okay. I have one more question. Trustee Garner? Does Ring have uh, access to what's being recorded on a person's doorbell? Uh, according to their information, they do not. They, do not. they don't have any access to your, uh, your equipment unless you share your equipment with them. So according to the information uh, in this agreement, you guys have a memorandum of understanding in front of you? Yes. There's an update to that uh, that's a, uh, an, agree, uh, an access agreement that was updated today. And so I, I do have a couple of highlights that I can share with you on, on what those changes are. And so uh, including in this uh, access to an agreement, we would, we would disclose the credentials of those within the police department who would have access to this program. We have to monitor that and then, uh, and that is established and, and uh, monitored through Ring. 
we, we all agree that we will only use the neighbor's portal for legitimate law enforcement purposes and that we will promptly notify Rain if we become aware that us or any of our personnel have violated any of the, uh, on the, the terms of the agreement. So to answer your question directly, uh, according to Ring and their information, they don't have access to your camera. They can't see live feed and they cannot see saved data without you sharing it with them. So what I'm hearing you say is all sharing is done on a case by case basis. So we do, in, in, when we make a request for information, we do have to provide a case number. We have to provide circumstances of the uh, description of the, the incident, the suspicious incident, if you will. And, and then that goes through a vetting process before they share that with the area we are looking at. Any other questions for Chief Smith? I'll make a motion to approve. I have a motion from Trustee Balmas. Second. Second by Trustee O'Brien. Roll call, please. Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Aye. Six aye. All right, motion carries. Um, and when, Jack, when we push this out, there's multiple ring apps in the store so I think we need to identify with the icon so people know they're downloading the right one and that it's not an endorsement of any one program over another that is generic we just need to be careful how we push it out and ready so after Christmas all right motion carries and we move on to item number two, approval of ordinance 2019-78, amending chapter 22 of the Gurney Municipal Code by the addition of article seven, prohibiting cannabis business establishments. So Patrick. Sure, so as you know, uh, the state of Illinois uh, signed the Cannabis uh, Regulation and Tax Act uh, we discussed this uh, back in uh, August at the Committee of the Whole. Subsequently conducted uh, two surveys. Uh, one was posted online. The other one we did uh, use the C2I system to uh, receive some additional feedback uh, from residents in town. Results were mixed on that. Um, that was just one piece of information um, that the Village Board has considered uh, throughout this process. Uh, we cannot uh, prohibit the uh, use of cannabis within the village of Gurney, but we can uh, restrict or prohibit sales and the establishments of uh, dispensaries within the village. So um, I followed up individually with trustees uh, to uh, speak with them to get their thoughts. Um, and based on that input that was received, uh, worked with attorney Winter to develop an ordinance uh, prohibiting uh, the sale of recreational cannabis within the village of Gurney. Um, obviously, the f later on down the line, future board comes along for this board um, and wants to um, change that. We can change it down the line. Um, but the input I received for the time being was that we wanted to uh, sit back and see how this plays on a little bit versus being on the the leading edge. So included uh, along with my memo is a list of uh, communities in the, in the state um, that have approved or prohibited uh, recreational sales. As you can see, the list is almost 50-50 as far as who's approved and, and um, who said no. Uh, some communities close to us that have said yes. Uh, Deerfield, Buffalo Grove, uh, Waukegan, Wadsworth, Zion. Um, some of those by us that have said no. Antioch, uh, Grays Lake, Lake Forest, Libertyville, Long Grove. Um, so like I said, it's, uh, it's a mixed bag at this point. Um, any questions from the trustees for staff? We've got Brian, Pat, and even David's here. Chief Smith's here. All right. Um, we did get a lot of 
not a lot, but we got some emails and I got some phone calls uh, over the weekend. Is there anyone here who wants to speak only about recreational cannabis dispensaries? Because I will allow public comment on marijuana recreational dispensaries. All right, if there's no public comment on that topic alone. I make a motion to approve. I have a motion from Trustee second. Bonus, second by Trustee O'Brien. Roll call. Turner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Aye. Six aye. All right. Motion carries. Move on to item number three, which is approval of ordinance 2019 79, imposing a moratorium on the establishment of smoke, vape, or hookah shops and or lounges. Uh, who wants to take this? You or Brian? I can. Uh, I can. Uh, basically, uh, much in the news has been uh, some health concerns about vaping, uh, and there continues to be uh, quite a bit of uh, analysis and research on that topic. Uh, also, there's been some discussions down in Springfield. Uh, with the possibility of some uh, state legislation uh, coming out of Springfield at some point in time. Uh, understanding all of that information, um, uh, basically um, tonight the board has an opportunity to impose just a six month moratorium to see whether there's going to be any state legislation. Uh, actually there was even some discussion about federal legislation and uh, so to give adequate time to uh, see whether those developments occur um, tonight, for your consideration, is the six months moratorium. Um, so, yeah, some of you recall we talked about. I talked about it internally over the summer, but with the state and the federal legislation pending, we're like, well, let's kind of wait. Um, and then, in the last six months, as you can see, the numbers almost like doubled. It seemed like um, in the lounges that have appeared in town. So. We really just want to take a step back, let the state or federal legislation catch up. Um, and so again, it's just a simple moratorium. And that's it, no judgment on whether you, vaping is appropriate or not. Trustee O'Brien? I just have one question. Uh, are there any pending applications? <coughs> I'm not aware of any. That, that's a good question. Uh, uh, we have none pending. Thank you. All right, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Motion Second. by Trustee Garner. Second by Trustee O'Brien. Roll call, please. Uh, Garner. Aye. O'Brien. Aye. Balmas. Aye. Hood. Yes. Thorstenson. Yes. Ross. Aye. Six aye. All right. Motion carries. That's end of our end of our regular business. So I open the floor for public comment. If you'd like to address the board, you can state your name at the microphone. Address is optional. Comments directed at the board. All right. There's no comments. <coughs> Hello, my name is Yolanda Matlow. I'm a Gurney resident. And I'm here to talk about ethylene oxide emissions in Gurney and, and Waukegan. So last Wednesday, November 13th, the House Bill 3888 was killed in the Senate Executive Committee as we feared it would, it would be. Um, I find it deeply disturbing that our village leaders did not file a proponent witness slip in favor of House Bill 3888 on behalf of the village of Gurney. Hundreds, if not thousands, of your constituents wanted the bill passed, yet you did not represent their collective voices. Please remember that you are public servants elected to represent us your constituents. Vantage Specialty Chemicals and Medline do not have the right to release a scientifically proven carcinogen and mutagen into our air and increase our risk of getting cancer. No one has that right. These ethylene oxide emissions are creating a public nuisance. Our right to a healthy life trumps their right to make money. It is time for our local elected officials to step up and protect their constituents. I am here 
to ask the village to exercise its home rule authority and pass a nuisance ordinance which bans the release of ethylene oxide from a point source in the village of Gurney. The same request was made, will be made from the city of Waukegan. Clearly, we are very comfortable passing ordinance around vaping, around marijuana, yet this issue sits here for a year without proper attention. The leaders in Willowbrook vowed that they would exercise whatever power was necessary to remove the public nuisance Sterigenics was posing. They followed through on that. In April, the, uh, the Willowbrook community voted to make their community a home rule entity. If the state laws were not going to keep Sterigenics from releasing a proven carcinogen and mutinogen, then they were prepared to exercise that home rule authority to pass a nuisance ordinance around ethylene oxide. Fortunately, the landlord did not renew Sterigenics lease, so they did not have to go that route, but they were prepared to pass a local ordinance to protect the community. Um, so I think that's the, the next thing we need to do. And, and around this, this Ring app, because app, I work in technology, so surveillance and security is, is my MO. So um, this brings into question privacy, surveillance, and the, ex and the expanding reach of our tech giants and local police departments. Do you know that Ring is owned by Amazon, which is already a huge player in the e-commerce space? Um, to quote an article from, from the Washington Post, this is a law professor, um, Andrew Guthrie Ferguson, he's a law professor and the, and the author of The Rise of Big Data and Policing. He says, by tapping into, quote, a perceived need to more, to more self-surveillance and by playing on cu uh, customer fears about crime and security, Ring has found a clever workaround for the development of a whole new surveillance network without the kind of scrutiny that would happen if it was coming from the police or government. Legal experts and privacy advocates have voiced alarm about the company's eye, eyes everywhere ambitious and increasingly close relationship with the police, saying the program would threaten civil liberties, churn residents into informants, and, and subject innocent people, including those who Ring uses to flag as suspicious, to greater surveillance and potential risk. I really wish these public comments were before you vote and versus afterwards, because hopefully that could influence some of your decision making. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dana Wick and I'm a Gurney resident. Thank you for letting me stand here before you today. My family moved here this past June from Wisconsin due to a new and exciting job opportunity for my husband. We specifically chose to be in Gurney because of the many great experiences the community would provide for our two young girls. They are four and seven. We left our happy home and safe community of Wauwatosa in hope, with high hopes that Gurney would provide us the same, if not more. However, during the six months we have lived here, I've never experienced so much stress and fear for my fut children's future health and safety. We all know that ETO is a class 1A carcinogen and mutagen, and this, it has the ability to alter DNA, as well as causes cancers, leukemias, neurological disorders, and so much more. It's terrifying to know that we as Gurney residents are breathing this in on a continuous basis. The results of the canister testing done over the summer combined with scientific evidence and health warnings show that ETO has no place near our homes and schools, and it has no business being here in Gurney with all of the health implications it causes. The amount of people that are becoming aware and concerned about the true dangers of ETO is growing quickly. I also think a portion of the community is not yet ready to accept the scary findings. They are skeptical, unsure of who to believe, and perhaps in denial. Quite possibly they're waiting for you, trusting you, our mayor and village trustees, our elected officials, to speak out and take action, like other communities recently facing this challenge have done. <coughs> However, that has not yet happened. House Bill 3888 is behind us, and although we are tired and frustrated that it did not pass, we cannot look back or stop advocating for our simple right to breathe clean air. We must come together as a community and move forward. Gurney has the Home Rule Authority to ban ethylene oxide. You have the authority to execute Home Rule and to help stop Vantage from poisoning us. Please do not let them continue to operate this way. 
Show us that you care more about the people of your community than you care about Vantage, a company that is spewing out toxic gases and polluting our air. My family really wants to belong in Gurney. We literally just moved here, but are considering putting our home back up for sale in the spring if the ETO doesn't disappear for good. The longer we stay here, the longer we are knowingly exposing our innocent children to the highly, <coughs> this highly carcinogenic gas, and my husband and I refuse to let this happen. I stand here tonight begging and pleading you, Mayor and the Village Trustees, to please help us in this health crisis. Join us, support us, or even better yet, lead us in becoming, coming together as a community to provide safe and clean air for our children. Thank you. Thank you. All right, that's the end of public comment. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Trustee Balmas. Second. Second by Trustee Thorstensen. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned.